yeah. and uh, maybe examples of how you apply needs in your life. And um, my idea is that we will explore it in a circle. So I have asked Salil and Mari to create a circle for me. So uh, the six people that are panelists, they are my circle. And I have put you in a circle. And uh, before we start, I'll tell you how you are sitting in the circle. I see you in a circle. I see you face in the circle. Mm -hmm. And we, the we first will. part will be exploring this together with the six of you plus Salil and Mari. And later on, we will open for anyone who can ask questions and we can have maybe a little bit of a dialogue. Yeah. So much for the structure. And Mari, is there more you want to say before we start? Yes, I, I want to uh, to tell people how they how they can interact with us. So if uh, you are uh, viewing from Zoom, uh, if you registered and you are viewing it from Zoom, you have uh, on the on the left corner up uh, left corner the option for chat. You can uh, click on the chat and you can um, uh, put there uh, questions or comments. Actually, we can we can test now. I would like to test that uh, chat right now. Can you tell me where are you from, for example? I would like to see if the chat is working as uh, we are uh, expecting. Oh, okay. Kirsten is from Denmark. Janita is from India. Hi. Dipti from Mumbai. Wow. There are one. Okay. India, a lot of people from India. <laughs> uh, as far as I know, uh, Kirsten um, has uh, has given trainings in India uh, for some time. Isn't isn't that uh, right, Kirsten? And uh, you are well known in this community. So uh, I guess people uh, wanted to see you again. Oh, we have. Uh, Miranelle is from Canada. <laughs> okay, and sitting in Berlin, Germany. Okay, so the chat is working. Yeah, and we have somebody from Iran, and we have somebody from uh, Israel. Germany, Israel. Uh, yes, so we have quite yeah. a few. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking for the chat possibility. Uh, for me, the chat is in the bottom. Depends on what computer you have, I guess. Mm, okay. okay Next get, to the I guess, share screen, and yeah. I guess I will find it. Hmm. Okay, so we we can we can start. I can uh, talk with uh, Ishar uh, in the chat to help him with um, uh, with the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's hard. I'm I'm coming in the chat with you. Okay, I will try to to chat with you. Okay. In the meantime, uh, I guess uh, Kirsten can uh, uh, start the the session. I can't wait. <laughs> okay. So I'll tell you how you are sitting in my circle. So. And that means you will speak after the person that is before you in the circus. You can know when it's your time or your turn. And there are some people that are not showing up yet. So after me, I put Madalina. I don't see her here yet. Uh, Madi. Madi. Yeah, oh, that is you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Madi. <laughs> Yes, uh, Madalina is the the longer version in Romania is my Romanian Thank name. You. And uh, for the for those that are, uh, that are not Romanian, it's really hard to pronounce my name, Madalina. So I shorten it to Maddie. Thank you. After Maddie, Salil, then yes. comes Ula and Ishar and Sid. And Ananda, she's not here. Yeah, she's not here. She's. And Mironel. And from Mironel, it goes back to me. Okay. So, <clears throat> this topic of what is needs? And Suda, what are you? You wait? Okay. 
So needs, what are needs? What are they for? I like us to uh, start in this way of exploring it together that we take turns saying one sentence. What is a need for me or how do I use it? What is it good for? What does it help me do? And I am not looking for explanations. So if you have some very intelligent academic explanations, that's not what I'm inviting for. I'm inviting for something simple, like a one sentence. Uh, need is life expressing itself through me. It could be one sentence that what needs are for me. And um, I'll say only one thing. So we will take turns. The word will pass around a couple of times and try to have this uh, understanding that it's not important who says what. It's important that it is said. So if I'm sitting preparing a very nice sentence, what needs are, and Mirrorel says it just before me, then I celebrate the way he said it, and I don't need to repeat it. And not to have the ego too much involved in me delivering my very clever words, but that together we create a shared understanding or inspire each other and get wiser. So we can have our shared wisdom inform us all. So one simple sentence, one thing at a time, and the word will be passed around a couple of times. And you can mix the questions together. Uh, what are needs? What are they good for? What do they help me do? You can mix it all together. Um, and um, I like to start with this one I said. For me, needs are life expressing itself to me. And then the word goes to Mari. Well, uh, for me, needs are um, energy and they are clues. Clues for my life. Thank you. Salil? Unmute yourself, Salil. Okay. So for me, needs are uh, what... Uh, Kirsten said, as life expressing uh, through me, and also it gives me an idea about what, for me, is uh, what is going on within me, and what is what is my life really asking for. Thank you, Sudan. It says I've been okay, right. So for me, uh, needs was came to me as the missing piece of the jigsaw that brought meaning into my life and gave gave meaning to much of what is happening around me. Thank you. And it's time. For me, understanding needs. It's a um, connecting with uh, with my with my motivations thank you and sit <clears throat> um to me i see them as powerful motivators um and I, di I didn't get fully what you said. You said motivators? Yeah, motivators and drivers to... I think your voice is breaking up, but uh, you said motivators and drivers? Sorry, I'll repeat that. I said for me they are powerful motivators and drivers uh, of engagement with the world and with myself. Thank you. And uh, Mirunen? So for me, needs are the opening of a corridor, the, the, a way to experience an opening between life and myself. Yes, thank you. So, then it's me again. 
And uh, I'm trying to say not what I remember about it, but to speak from this moment. So I want to invite all of you also to think of saying something that is coming up alive for you right now and not what we knew about it, the topic yesterday. So what comes up right now? What I remember about it. I think it's life itself in the sense that it cannot be described. So I have neat words that's kind of pointing to it, but really it's a different thing than the words. It's life itself. Mari? Uh, yes. Um... For me, um, needs are like guides, like invisible guides uh, that uh, show me if I'm my, on my path or not, if I'm happy or not, if I uh, pursue my, my dreams or not. I'm Thank you. Salil? Oops. I guess you know, I'm taking a pass because I'm just doing some admin work. Yeah. Okay. With that. Well, I experience uh, needs like an ocean in my belly. <laughs> with waves every once in a while popping up and saying, you know, see me, watch me. Here I am. I'm smiling because I have a similar word for it. <laughs> and I like that you said it. <laughs> Thank you. It's time. Me, it's like door openers. It's, uh, there are many, many different doors and there are names on that. And each one of them are opening it's a, a chance for um, exploration what's behind the doors. Mm -hmm. So the meat are these doors where I can open and enter the wisdom that has no words actually. It's uh, the energy which is behind the doors. Thank you. And Sid? So I'm going to take your advice and uh, just say what's coming up for me right now. And I, I find uh, needs consciousness has been very inconvenient uh, because it has meant taking responsibility for things that in the past, I could blame on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inconvenient. Maybe at first. Thank you. But, and, and empowering. Yes, yes. Um, then it is Mirna. Needs are what I find important in this moment. Moment by moment, they tell me what is important to me. Thank you. So I'd like us to move also a little bit into what it can be used for. It's, I think Sid said something that's actually also how we can apply them. And um, I think for me, the most clear way I experience needs as something that helps me is that it's more likely that the actions I take will serve me and my life or me and others, the life of all of us, than if I act without knowing my needs before I act. Thank you. Then it's uh, Mari. Um. The, the, the only thing that comes into my mind ra right now is that for me needs are like little devils that don't give me peace if they are not met. So they will stay with me uh, until they, they are met, until I find a strategy to, to meet them. So this is how I experience right now uh, needs uh, in this period of life. Otherwise, uh, we are good friends. <laughs> Thank you, Salil. Are you with us? 
Or are you in the technical world? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm actually answering questions, and so we will, you can skip me. Okay. Sudan? Yeah. Um, for me, I think uh, needs are what bring meaning and depth in my life. I think earlier, before I was even aware that there was something like this word called needs and this energy called needs, it seemed as if I was flailing around uh, on the surface and somewhere this adds a lot of meaning and depth to my life and in everything that I do. Or not do. Or not do, yeah. And is hard? To do with uh, my, the world of my feelings. Uh, my feelings are getting an address. They are not just somewhere in the air, they are connected to somewhere. So it's a great relief to, to be able to connect my feeling world, wor worlds. And needs are the connection. And uh, yeah, that's what gives meaning for all this world of feelings and yeah, emotion. It gives it, 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 it a reason. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Sid? Um, so I was just uh, thinking of how this awareness has shifted anything for me. And um, I realize it has helped me have more authentic connections, both with myself um, and with others, especially when, the, when I'm experiencing challenge. Thank you. And uh, Miruna? Knowing my needs really helps me to ask for what I need and what I want. And then it also helps me very much to grieve what I don't have the possibility to get and to be able to mourn skillfully. Thank you. Can you see me again? Um, I'm just considering if this will be our last round. Maybe, let's see, uh, it could be the last round. So if you're sitting with some things you really want to say, then it's time in the, in the coming round to say. So I think what, what it helps, what needs helps me do also is to see more options. And that is for me actually the key to freedom. Um, I'm just in a situation in my life right now where there's a lot of exciting things going on and I notice how needs help me stay free and not be, have, not have like one single uh, strategy that I really look for. I have flexibility and freedom and uh, I'm enjoying that sense in me. Thank you. Mari? You are mute. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I uh, I'm really grateful that I I um, I became more aware of uh, what is alive in me and uh, what do I need in, in a certain moment. Um, this awareness, uh, being more present in my life, um. Give me the opportunity to enjoy life more than than ever before. So yes, I'm really grateful to NBC in general and to the community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Salil, do you want to speak? Uh, we have Ganga here, uh, who is taking my place. Uh, question, so she has some questions. Okay. Okay, so Ganga, do you know what we're doing so that you're ready to say what needs are and what they help you do? Hi, Kirsten, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, needs are like breath and it helps me stay alive. 
Thank you. Sudan? Uh, needs have taught me to dance. <laughs> Thank you. Isha? I'm celebrating what I've heard and I'm, I'm okay. I pass it on. Thank you, Sid. Um, needs a help me to not do much, to just be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not struggling, not not trying to run around like a headless chicken, but just be centered and anchored, yeah. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. And uh, Mironen? Needs help me to awaken my soul. Thank you. Kirsten, we have an attendee who, who would like to say, his name is Vivekananda. He says, needs are constant drivers which motivate, give purpose to life. I like that one. Yes. Thank you. So just checking with my little circle here, if there's any one of you who is sitting with one more thing you want to say before we move on. All is set, all is well. I would so like to I'd I'd like to I would like to emphasize the thing of the here and now. It's coming to me very strongly. That needs yes. are helping me to stay to be in the here and now. I like that. And um, I take the freedom now to say a few finishing things from me. And uh, this cue about here and now is uh, something that I would like to stress very much, that needs are only happening in the here and now. And uh, the more I take that in and try to understand what that means, that talking about a need I had yesterday doesn't really make sense. Um, and I will admit that in the beginning of my life with NBC, I had a lot of needs in the past and in the future and spend a lot of time trying to understand what that is, what does it look like. So to have this understanding that it's actually something that is here and now. And um, I, th I also think of it as if I'm willing to listen to my needs, it's kind of listening to my soul because I think my soul expresses itself that way. It's an expression of life or the life beyond the life. And um, another thing I like to add, which is a little bit more technical about needs, is something that I've started to understand more the, the later years, is that it's a, it's a noun. It's not a verb and it's not an adjective. It's a noun. And that makes a difference. Um, there are a lot of need words that you can't say as a verb. I have a need to be understood. I can also say I need understanding. And uh, there are some needs that is difficult to say only as a, as a known, which for example, to be seen and heard. I need seeing, seeing and hearing. Maybe it would be a bit weird to say it that way. But I feel a difference when I say I need to be understood or I need understanding. If I say I need to be understood, it's kind of like I put another person in the picture that is doing the understanding. To be understood, it's an action of somebody. So I sense more freedom if I can talk about it as a noun. It's an understanding. I need understanding. I need listening. And um, this thing that it is a, an ascriptive thing, it's not a descriptive thing. It cannot be described, you know the way to say that the map is never the territory, that the, the need words are like the map, but the territory is a totally different um, experience to really be in the landscape than just to look at the map. So that was the last thing I wanted yeah. to add about me. Yes, and there are a couple of more uh, attendees who would like to say something. There is Farah from yeah. Iran. And yes, thank you. She says, needs help me to connect with others easily than seeing the strategies alone. And, Wonderful. 
Yes, and then we have Ajit Menon, and Ajit says that needs are those feelings that make us restless, which leads to disruption, which in turn leads to growth. I like that too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank the circle for helping me put words on a thing like needs. What are they and what can be used them for? And I'm ready to open for questions or comments from the wider circle. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask a, a question, Kirsten, that yeah. yes, we've spoken a lot about uh, needs, but what is the real purpose of having the needs, the real reason that we have these needs? You mean the reason from God or the universe? <laughs> from whoever. Put it in yeah, God? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the, it's the same with every living being, like plants and animals and everything that is alive has a movement towards life. And I think that when we talk about needs, we are talking about a movement towards life. And um, I like to point to a book I was reading a couple of years back about biology. It's called Biology of Belief by a, a scientist called Bruce Lipton who described that each cell in us has enough life to be able to move towards nurturing and move away from danger. Even if you take out the, what do you say, the core of the cell, so you only have the, the rest of the cell, but not the core, it still can move uh, towards nurturing and away from danger. So I think it's uh, inherent, 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 what is, how do you say? Inherent. Inherent. In every, inherent in every living being that there is a movement. Life is moving. If there is no life moving, there is no life. So life cannot be still. It cannot be static. And um, for me, this is also what empathy and NDC points to, that it's connecting to something that is moving. And when I experience real deep listening with empathy, I can have a sense of something is moving forward in me, which is this readiness of life to get unstuck from the pain and move forward. So why do we have needs? I think the why is needs is just a way of talking about life. Why do we have life? Yeah, because we are alive. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We also have a few more people. Sorry, uh, one moment. We also have a few more participants who would like to say something. There is Deepali. She says, connect, uh, connecting the source within me. Yes. Yes. And then we have, uh, okay, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. So I also have a question. Thank you. So I've often heard uh, needs and values as being used as a different way of expressing this aspect in NVC. And I'm curious to know because um, some needs words that we classically use can definitely be understood as a value, like let's say honesty. Uh, that can be I really value honesty and I'm needing honesty. And other needs words don't come across as values, something like um, water or food. It's not a value that I have. It's simply even a substance that I would need in a certain moment. And, um, and I'm curious to explore or to know if you would say that there's, in a way, um, a core of needs that could be considered values and a more, let's say, for lack of a better term, um, superficial layer of needs that are moving, let's maybe more... Um, flexibly through life, that in one moment we would need it, in another moment we don't, whereas we'd have values that stay as more of a, a core in our being. I'm not sure if my question is being put very clearly, but it's around this difference between needs and values and how we can use those terms sometimes synonymously and sometimes not. Is that clear? Sometimes anonymously? Synonymously. Synonymously, okay, thank you. As synonym. Yes. Um. I want. I just want 
to celebrate that you asked that question, I had the same question in mind. So thank you for, uh, for expressing that. So our speaking circle functions is being set. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I guess there are many ways of looking at it. I like to look at it as a continuum that in one end I have the need and then in the other side I can have the strategies that meet the need and somewhere in the middle I would put the values. And sometimes the values are very close to needs and sometimes they are more close to what strategies I choose. And if you make a drawing where you put needs in the middle and around it you put all the strategies that could meet this need that you put in the middle, for example, freedom. There will be some values in my system that will cross out some of the possible strategies. They won't work for me because they're outside of my value system. So I might have a big circle of strategies available, but this part I take out because they might be harmful to other people, so I won't use them. It's outside of my value, but it might meet my need for freedom, but still I don't want to use that strategy. So the values guide me, you can say it's a short way of getting clear that there are some strategies. I don't need to think long about them. To get my food by stealing it from you is crossed out already. I don't need to consider that option. Um, and the other thing about uh, whether they are met or not, I think of all our needs as they can be hungry or they can be fulfilled. And that goes for food and water. It, they show up, they make me aware of them when they are hungry. And then I go to the refrigerator, get some food and some drinking, and they uh, fall asleep again. They are not hungry anymore. And I think it's the same with freedom and love and honesty that they can be hungry and they call my attention, they motivate me to take action, or they can be fulfilled and I don't think much about them. For example, in my country, I don't think much about the freedom of speech because in general we have freedom of speech here. But now we just seen the, the election in Turkey and some possible changes there that might make it more difficult to have access to freedom of speech and other countries too. So for me, this aspect of freedom to say what I want to say is not very hungry. I don't think much about it. But if you put me in a place where I'm being told I cannot speak my honesty here, then it will wake up and it will motivate me to try to do something to, to change it. So I would like to hear, Mirinel, if this is speaking to what you wanted to speak about. Uh, to a certain extent, I'm, I'm aware that perhaps the way I formulated the question wasn't as, as focused to be able to also elicit the precise response that I'm looking for. In a way, um, it's also another way to put it is about unwrapping the needs. So you could have a need for, um, let's say, space in a certain moment, which, which might mean that you want to maybe be alone and under that as a strategy. And then under the need for, for having some space is actually the need for freedom. And so sometimes we experience layers of needs. So I'm wondering about whether or not that's another way of talking about a, a core need. And as I said, you use the word value, as opposed to the passing needs. I don't know if that helps to point towards my question. So I, I like that you are exploring different ways of looking at it. And uh, what is core and what is passing and what does it really mean? And um, one thing that comes to my mind when I listen to you is that I think that needs can be kind of layered um, so that they maybe they show up in the in a way that is closer to a strategy and really deep behind that is maybe the need for meaning in my life. So I can start with the need for respect or understanding and maybe under that is the need for 
creativity and for spontaneity and actually it lands in the need for meaning and i think there are needs that are more um, well i don't really know, like to call it core i call it deeper or higher than others respect for me is very close to strategy and meaning for me is very much deeper and closer to my soul so yeah. meaning and contribution and uh, freedom would be needs that I, and empathy would be needs that I would see as deeper than being listened to or respect or things like that. I know that Robert Gonzalez once said that all longings are longings for love. Yeah. I think that could be another way of, of yes. putting it. Yeah. There, there is only love. So, yeah. again, about the other stuff, there is only love. <laughs> Even you could even say meaning, the search for meaning is a search for love in in a way, depending on how you want to define things. Yeah, that answers my question now. Now I feel like the discussion is on that point. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we can open up for other people. Yeah, Kirsten, there is Mirel here who would like to say something. Yeah. Hello, Mirel. Mirel, how do we say your name, Mirel? You are muted. Oh. <laughs> Do you hear me now? I hear you now, yeah. Good, good. Um, my name is pronounced as Miraya. Miraya? Yeah, 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 exactly. Thank you. And uh, uh, hi to everyone. <laughs> I'm Hello. listening for a while on the poll already. And as I heard you speak to uh, the piece of values versus needs, um, the way I was listening to you, to which I found that picture very helpful of having, let's say, freedom in the middle and the strategies around, um, it also came to me that hearing, um, if other people mention strategies that would, let's say, serve my need for freedom, um, that it's not particularly my values that would help me define whether or not certain strategies are okay for me, but they don't serve other needs. Yeah. So there, um, although I like your description, it, it did not particularly help me in, ex in, in distinguishing needs from values um, through, through that, let's say, picture. Would there, would there be some, um, some other example that you could think of that is more depictive or, or descriptive about the difference? I like very much to look at it from many different angles and um, and what I think I understand you saying is that what what would make you choose some of the strategies available is that you are already aware that they might not be serving some other needs that you want to serve with the same action. So we're looking at a strategy and we want it to serve all our needs and actually the needs 360 degree around. So that when I look to look for a step or an action to take, that I want to check all my needs, that they are met by this action. And very often I don't manage to do that. And then I mm -hmm. take a step and I notice that a few needs were not met by it. And then I mourn that and I try to repair it and be wiser next time. Mm -hmm. so is that more this way you were thinking of it? Uh it's somewhat helpful but i'm still not fully clear because i personally also use the words um exchangeably especially especially on the work floor i would more speak of values than of needs but i'm actually re referring to the needs it's just not the language that is so well accepted um, on the work floor mm -hmm. yeah so that is that is where in a way you know in my brain they kind of work at the same thing so i'm still sort of wanting to grasp you know what is a uh, is there even really a difference between the values between values and needs? Um, I liked that you are contemplating that question, and I'm just thinking of, um, for example, Christian and Muslims. They might have the need for respect, both of them, mm -hmm. and and depending on the culture we live in, we have a preference, some preferred strategies, and. Mm -hmm. um, what would be considered very um, a kind of normal in my Christian world would be young people dating uh, long before they are <laughs> grown up or long before they are ready to get married. 
and in a Muslim world, maybe not. Mm -hmm. So for me, that is speaking about some values mm -hmm. that is not exactly the same as the needs. Yeah, this this is this is uh, where I'm. Yeah, where I'm catching up on on uh, on the difference. Yeah, so there's some cultural values, and they mm -hmm. are not the same as needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank and, you. That's that's yeah. helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, other people. Yes. Uh, are there, there are others, no others in the attendees who would like to ask some questions? You can type them in, and we will invite you in. Yes, yes and, and I'm also thinking we could do a little meditation towards the end. But let's have some more questions first. So I'd like to ask you a question, Kirsten. Uh, Thank you. Which is something uh, that is oft asked for greater clarity. Uh, uh, we are often told that. The needs are mine, and uh, it's my business to meet them. And uh, and therefore, there are some, but there are some needs which seem to be dependent on the other. And I can think of something like cooperation or support, or even intimacy. And uh, how do I? How do I go about? And of course, it's easy to say that if I don't get cooperation from somebody, I can get cooperation from somebody else. But some things are, are, are uh, less easy than cooperation and support. So I'm wondering if you can say something on that. Yeah. Thank you. What to say about that? <laughs> so. For me, this has been a, a. I've been on a long journey with that question. What does it really mean that the needs are my responsibility? What does it mean to take full responsibility for any need I have? Support, cooperation, intimacy, love, whatever. And um, the way you said it, cooperation, yeah, if I don't have that need met with one person, I can look for another person. That's already a good beginning. So I have more than one strategy. Because if I have only one strategy, I'm stuck. So just to be able to imagine that if we don't get along and the need for cooperation doesn't seem possible to have met with this person, I can look for another person. But still, it's kind of weird to look at it without any person in the picture. And still, I think it is, um, it's a dimension in me uh, if I look in my inner landscape, there is definitely something that has, you can put the label cooperation on it, but it's actually much more than just a word. It's a state inside of me. In this ocean in my belly, as you talked about, there is a beauty called cooperation. And, and one phrase that has helped me is to look at the need as with a, with a sentence in front of it saying, I am a lover of cooperation. I'm a lover of support. I'm a lover of intimacy. That helps me um, get this other person to step a little bit out of it because I have the need. And of course, there's a person I'm wanting to, you can say, play with, explore this need with. And it helps me make a little distance between it. If I can see that cooperation is something that is part of my inner ocean and it's a beautiful thing. I am actually a lover of cooperation. More than I'm, a long, I'm longing for it. I'm hungry for it. I'm loving it. And uh, I want to find people to play with where this need can be met between us. Um, but I also think, ultimately, that we are interconnected. And even if I take full responsibility for me meeting my needs, also my need for cooperation, support, and intimacy, that I also have a need to live my interconnectedness with you. I cannot live my love fully, my love for life, my love for people fully, 
without being interconnected. So there is also, for me, at least, maybe some of my colleagues would say differently, I actually don't know, but I actually think there is a place where my interconnectedness plays out. I remember something that Marshall once said in a workshop in Denmark many years ago. We talked about the need for food, and he just been uh, visiting uh, places in Africa. And he said this very clearly, my need for food and nurturing cannot be fully met as long as I know there are some people who have nothing to eat. So the feeling of us being connected will always play out in some sense of how much I can enjoy it. How, <laughs> and one thing he said is make sure you enjoy your food if you have food to eat. You kind of is your almost obligation, is a way of honoring those who don't have food. And it, when I eat my food, at least I enjoy it and appreciate that I have food. So I wonder, Sula, if this is touching on what you are grappling with. Um, uh, yes, it is. And thank you for that. And especially for the interconnectedness part of it. Because I was going to say, a, a need like to matter. Yeah. You know, I have a need to matter. And uh, that so calls for, apart from mattering to myself, that so calls for uh, someone outside. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. If I'm the only person in this world, I will be in trouble. It's hard to meet my needs if I'm totally alone. Mm -hmm. Even if I can meditate on me taking responsibility for them. Thank you for asking that, Sudan. So if no one is sitting with a burning question, I would like to invite you to a, a little meditation or a little exercise. So let's check first, are there more questions coming? Yeah. Can we uh, check from the attendees, please? Is there any attendee who'd like a question or which has been missed out and not answered? So please, at this time, type in so that we know the question is still pending. You can even use the Q&A at the bottom. You can type in your question in the Q&A. Vivek, did you get your question answered? OK, we're not hearing from anybody. Uh, yeah, Vivek says yes, Mirella has answered his question. So I saw okay, some uh, chats going on on the side, and that was very interesting too. Okay. Yeah, some people, yeah. Can you save the chat for later so I can yes. read it later because yes. I'm not reading it now? Yes, we will do that. Thank you. So are you up for a little exercise? No. Yes. So I will. Um, I will invite you to think of a need that is not fully met for you at this time in your life. Uh, don't take a, a very huge, painful, desperate, unmet need. Just, just something that you would like to have a little more met in your daily life. <clears throat> and um, I can say from, I will choose the, the need freedom because uh, I could enjoy experiencing that my need for freedom could be a little bit more met in some of my relations. So I invite you to think of any need that you would like to see that it becomes a little bit more met. And uh, how can I know when you're ready? Can you not when you're ready? Or we can raise the hand. Okay, thank you. So then I invite you to think of that need, uh, the word, and to take some deep breath. I suggest three deep breaths. When you think of this need and you hold it inside. How dear this need is for me. How much I would like it to be a little more met. So if you have taken three deep, long breaths, then you 
the next thing is to try out this sentence, I am a lover of, and then you put in your need, I am a lover of freedom. And take another three deep breaths. Deep, long breaths. Okay, and then I want to, you to check inside and see if you can measure this need that you would like to have a little more met. Is it a little more met now? Is it a little less met or is it the same? And I will ask first if you can raise your hand if it's a little more met now after thinking about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes, thank you. Who find it the same? We yes. also have some in the chat who have uh, raised their hands a lot, but one, two, three, four of them have raised their hands. Five okay, thank you. Yeah. And who found that looking at it made it clear that it is even more unmet than you thought when you started? Like it, it shows up more hungry than you thought. So can you raise your hand if you experience that it's become less met? Thank you. And uh, I'd like just to say that the, the statistic here, looking at how many of you experience it to be a little more met is very close to what I experience. Often it's between 60 and 80% who say they experience the need a little more met just by thinking about it just by connecting with it, just by feeling it inside. And for me, this is magic. And I think this is the magic of life and how it's an expression of how much influence I have on how well I feel in my life. So I would like to invite the comments. Maybe we could use our circle from before and have comments from the circle. Uh, how did you experience that little exercise? Or if you have any reflections, short, short reflections, one or two sentences. So can we have that? We're starting with Mari. You are mute. Yep. Yes, I, I know. I, well, I was muted. Um, it helped me um, realizing the need because, and I'm really thankful for, for that, uh, for that, uh, exercise because I became aware of that need. My need is consistency. And uh, I thought that I, I needed something else like uh, rest or uh, um, something similar. But uh, taking time, I realized that it was consistency. And uh, it wasn't necessarily a little more met but i celebrated that i identified and now i can go on and find strategies to meet that need so thank you for the opportunity thank you and celine are you with us yes so for me the need was the same as yours it was freedom and uh, once again it was uh, hardly in my awareness that I was looking for uh, freedom, but when you asked us to find a need and I got in touch with it, I realized how much I was longing for it. And also I began to see where all it was being met in my life. And uh, that was the real uh, takeaway for me because the moment I realized that, yes, I have a need for freedom, but it's being met many places. So I, that was nice. Thank you. Thank you. Sudha? Yeah, for me, my need was balance. And uh, I think the experience of feeling that balance in my body, and when I said I'm a lover of balance, there was something very tender as well as a fullness to it, a sort of an expansion. That's how I experienced it. Thank you. Sudha? Yeah, for me, I started with uh, the need for community. And then it became clearer 
and that it's actually, I'm talking about shared reality. It, uh, and then I, I started feeling a lot of warm, warmth inside myself and, and, uh, and the feeling of what's happening here now with us. It's actually it's serving so much my need for community and for shared reality. So it was uh, all mixed together. And uh, I, feel, I feel much better now about these two needs, I mean, community and shared reality. And uh, yeah, I'm celebrating it. Thank you. Then it's it. Um. So my, my need was also for balance. And um, I think what shifted in that time of silence and just centering was, I, I was reminded of one of my first encounters with NVC and uh, Godfrey. Uh, I was attending something with Godfrey and his words about how the universe is always meeting our needs in any ways, mm -hmm. in so many different ways. And yeah. I've always found that uh, extremely powerful to get centered and really appreciate how needs are being met. And uh, for me in this time of just those few moments of silence and looking within, help me connect with the, help me appreciate the balance that is there instead of seeking it out there. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's nothing out, <laughs> out of balance, it's all, it's all there. So yeah, it was, it was sweet. That's a very nice example. It doesn't take long time, but it takes focus and, and attention. Yeah. Thank you very much for that example. And then we have Mirna. You are mute. Thank you. So for me, the exercise connected me more with my need for clarity. And, and I connected with the feelings around that, which are sadness. And, um, and so I, I had this a moment, I guess, of, of connection. Um, uh, and it didn't change the level of needing clarity for me. So I could feel how much I needed, which I think I already knew. And, um, and it definitely brought it into a certain fullness of the feeling of it. Um, and it didn't change, I'd say, how much I felt that it was met or not met. Yeah. It sounds a little bit like it goes in both directions, that you become more aware of the sadness of it not being met. And even if you're a little more connected with it, it's, it's not really changing it in a less or more met way, but you're more in contact with it, maybe. Is, is that so? Yeah, exactly. In a way, it was exactly like you said, both. On one hand, the how how much i need clarity became clearer and so that made it feel more met and yet the depth of how much i need clarity was all oh, because it's clearer <laughs> it's sort of ironic with clarity i think getting clarity on how much clarity i need makes me feel like i need more clarity so it's both more and less met at the same time thank you so um we had a circle, but Ganga, you are in our circle, so uh, do you want to speak in this round? I also want to call your attention to that we are two minutes past our time, so I think we need to finish soon, but let's hear Ganga also before we end. I cannot hear you. I... Now, now Ganga speak, yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay, so um, the need was connection. And when I did the inhalation, exhalation, I discovered another dimension, you know, internal connection before external connection. Thank you. Miral, thank you. Miral, do you have anything to say? Yes, thank you. Um, I very much uh, enjoyed this exercise because it, the first thing that came to mind was love, but then I kept circulating down like there's more to it. It's more precise and uh, it came down to intimacy. And so with the breathing exercise, I kind of was trying to breathe in and first I, I came to, yes, it's sort of, you know, getting more fulfilled, but then in the end I, I really lost it. So it, it went back to, no, this is not fulfilled. 
yeah. it also didn't get worse but um I could understand to the uplift, let's say, but then, yeah, I guess the mind started talking again. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that example. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Kirsten, there's one participant who wanted to say something. Can I just read it? Okay. Now? Yeah. She said, Farah, Farah says, at first, I found confident as my need. Uh, after breathing, I found ease in, as, my, as my need. I celebrated ease in my mind. So first she found Thank confidence you. and then she found ease. Yeah. Thank you for that example. Sometimes we start with one need and it changes into something else without us really deciding it, but it changes on its own will. Thank you for that example. Uh, are we ready to close this meeting? Anything more you want to do or say? Um, I give the word back to Madi and Salil. Uh, uh, no, first I, first I say thank you very much for being willing to explore together with me. I've enjoyed it very much to be in this exchange with you. And to the degree we have had it be more a two-way exchange, I love it. So, Maria and Salil, anything yeah. you want to say to the end? Salil, I can let you to close the session. Yes. Uh, so, but before that, I just want to just say uh, thanks and uh, express my gratitude to Kirsten and also uh, all the other panelists, planned or not. Uh, I had uh, a, a lot of fun and uh, I discovered a lot of things and I'm really grateful for this opportunity of learning and uh, celebrating. Thank you. Thank you, Madi. And for me also, I'm celebrating because this was the first webinar that we have as NVC Connect. And we have many more plans. And uh, with the support from each of you, I think we can make this happen more often. So we look forward to you to being in the webinars and other activities that we have planned. And those of you who haven't liked the page, because that's one place that we would like to uh, pass on all the information through. So the Facebook page, NVC Connect, if you can go and like that, then you will get the information. And otherwise, also through this, we'll try to keep through, keep in touch through the emails. That will become difficult. Thank you so much. And also, uh, those who want to uh, to uh, know more about Kirsten and uh, uh, to find out about her uh, events, I will put in the chat right now in a minute uh, the two websites where uh, they can uh, find about uh, more about her. Okay, I will do. Put it also in the chat, in the Zoom chat, yeah. and also on Facebook, so people can uh, uh, can know more. Also maybe, about her. Also, maybe, maybe yeah, sorry. So, uh, I'm listening, Salil. Maybe Kirsten can also speak about uh, how people can connect with her and uh, uh, attend the work that she does. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have an international webpage, just, just my name, kirstenkristensen.com. You can get in touch with me through that list. And um, there I will advertise mainly my work in the UK, mainly the English uh, speaking uh, groups that I do. And other than that, you can find me on livcom, L-I-V-K-O-M dot D-K. And I want to call your attention to uh, the big training we have in June, the International Intensive Training in Denmark, IIT. If you have any friends in Europe that you want to inspire to learn some NVC, that would be a wonderful opportunity. We have room for more people. And it's a truly international group. We have people from all over the world, really, from Australia, Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So come yourself or send your friends. Okay, and we're looking forward to having you in India soon again, Kirsten. Thank you. Me too. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Mary. Yes. Bye. 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 Each, each of you Bye can. Leave. Yes. Bye. Bye.
Nej. Bye bye, Salim. Bye, Ganga. Bye, Zahar. Bye. <clears throat> See you in the next convention. Thank you. For the next webinar. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, Salil. So this is. We have some people one. from the. Uh, shall we just see if there's anybody remaining in the attendees? There are four people still here. And thank you, Annie Cesar. How do you pronounce Cesar? Cesar. He's Romanian. And Talat is my friend from Hyderabad. Thank you, Talat, for being there. And uh, yes, Lal is there. Thank you. Okay, so Bye -bye. we can wrap out, uh, wrap up, and uh, see you next time, guys. Yes. Okay, I said.